Hi, friends. It's Richard Horvitz, uh, the voice of Invader Zim, Moxie from Hell of a Boss, Daggett from Angry Beavers, Billy from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Alpha 5 from The Power Rangers, and many, many more. And you are watching In Conversation with Amber, the fangirl. Hi, guys. Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is an actor, a voice actor, a comedian. Well, in my eyes, because he's one of the funniest people I ever know. Um, well, I've ever known, that is. Uh, he is the voice of Billy in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Daggett in The Angry Beavers, Bumble in Connectimals, one of my favourite childhood games, that. Oh, my gosh. Takes me back. I tell you, I had a demo on my Xbox downstairs when I was, what, seven. I just play it all the time. And <laughs> I found out... I found out you were Bumble after because we met at game that tune. Uh, I'm year. Bumble. That's right. It's me, Bumble. <laughs> oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> I remember that. Oh my gosh. Like, I, and then I found out you were Bumble. I was like, why didn't I bring that up? Why? Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Um, my guest is also the voice of Alpha 5 in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He also played Mark Whitaker's attorney, uh, Matt Damon, uh, in The Infamous, the, the movie. Yep. Because Frank Welker was in it as Frank well. Frank Welker was like, also in it. That's father. right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, Howie Buchanan in The Monsters Today. That's with Jason. That. With, with, with Jason, Jason. Marsden. I yes. I spoke to him yesterday, and I said I was yes. to like, if you get a chance, bring up the monsters. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I will. I will for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I met Jason. My photo with him isn't on my wardrobe yet, but me and Jason met a few weeks ago. Uh, at Telford Comic Con. And yes, he was out there with, I believe, Gray Delisle was out there, right? Gray was there. Oh, yeah. there they are. Yeah. And, and let's see. I know. Gray Delisle was out there and Jason Morrison was out there and Bill I believe Farmer. Bill Farmer. Yeah. 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 I've not done any of the, of the, of the, uh, the UK uh, conventions. I've done a lot of um, uh, Australia. I did Australia like five oh. times. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. And New Zealand, but I haven't been to any of the UK conventions. Oh, well, we need to get you over here then. Yeah, we gotta get campaign. over there. Yeah. Okay, next, next, next year with all the big conventions going on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's uh, Troy Baker there, Peter Troy, Cullen, mm -hmm. Frank Welker. Uh, mm -hmm. That's me there. You can't really see because the lights are reflecting, <laughs> but that is me. Um, yes. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, that's me with my first ever voiceover job. It was for a helicopter. Uh, oh, very helicopter. nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so yeah, that. rides are great. I'm I'm on a bunch of rides at uh, yeah. Disneyland and oh, wow. Paris and Hong Kong. If you wow. if you ever go to um, uh, Tokyo Disneyland, not Hong Kong. If you go to Tokyo Disneyland, um, there's a ride that used to be here um, in in uh, California's uh, Disneyland in Anaheim called. Yeah. Well, it's actually in California Adventure. It was called Tower of Terror. Oh, and, yes, Tower uh, of Terror. I know because yeah. Uh, yeah. And that That's Tower of Terror, yeah. um, they've they've replaced it here. It's not Tower of Terror anymore. It's something yeah, else. Yeah, I think now. it's like Marvel Avengers or something. Yeah, like Marvel or something. Yeah, I think it's Marvel. Yeah. Um, but in Tokyo Disneyland, they were doing their own Tower of Terror. And the the subject matter of our Tower of Terror was uh, a show called um, The Twilight Zone. Yeah. But The Twilight Zone was not a big show in, in Japan. So they changed the whole theme. And the whole theme was... There was this guy that was like a uh, William Randolph Hearst, this guy who in, you know, in the early 1900s, like pillaged all of Europe for artworks. So it was a guy like that. And one of the things that he stole from one of these uh, one of these countries was this little tiki god that was uh... evil. That's me on the ride. So I ride with oh, you wow. through the whole ride. <laughs> so, yeah. That oh, that's so cool! Wow, because I had Mark Silverman on um a few mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah, because he was he was on the he was on the, the Tower of Terror as well. I think he is yeah. still on it at Tokyo. I I don't know. I'm not sure. After yeah. after relux, I did remember googling it and seeing your name. I was like, oh, mm. that's so cool. Mm -hmm. What else is on my list? Uh, Zim in Invader Zim, Moxie and Eddie in Hell of a Boss, Lanny Lolly in Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. Rasputin Aquato if I pronounce that correctly, in Psychonauts, True. Chaos in, Sky in the Skylanders franchise, and many, True. many more. My guest is Richard Horvitz. Richard Stephen Horvitz. Yeah. I, usually, yeah. I usually drop the Stephen at this age. Oh, Back you? when I, yeah, well, ah. 
back when I when I was starting out as an actor, because I started out yeah. as an on camera actor, uh, uh -huh. I was ten. Wow! And my mom thought she wants my whole name up there on the screen, mm -hmm. so it became Richard Stephen Horvitz, and uh, I uh, went by Richard S. Horvitz for a while. Now I'm just Richard Horvitz. Most uh -huh. people call me Rich Horvitz at this point. Ah, right. Do you yeah. Do Richard or Rich? Uh, Richard's fine. My, if my mom were still around, she would say, please call him Richard. She was adamant about that. Ah, uh, like, okay. Okay. So Richard there are, Yeah, yeah. There are a few people that call me Richie, yeah. which I really don't like, but these people I love, so I don't mind it. Like, uh, Rob Paulson calls me Richie. You probably heard Rob call me Richie. I, Billy think, West. I think so, yeah. Billy West calls me Richie. Uh, my sister-in-law, Desha, and, and the rest of my uh, in-law family calls me Richie. Uh, and so it's become kind of a term of endearment. Um, but Aww. yeah, yeah. That's Jess awesome. Arnell calls me Richie. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, but, but Maurice LaMarge calls me Richard. But, you know, Maurice and I go back further than all the other people. I Yeah, yeah, I of back. course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I think, Richard, we should start off with the most important topic that I would like to bring up in this and it's not to do with the voiceover it's to do with cereal because when we asked that <laughs> game that soon we yeah. i asked you what your favorite cereal was because i couldn't think yeah. of any other question in the world and you know me, i'm like okay common questions i'm not some i'm that's not something i usually ask people like you know everyone will get yeah. people asking of you about grim adventure billy and mandy or <laughs> uh, invader zim or hell of a boss uh right. but me no i just say what's your favorite cereal what's your favorite topping to put on a pizza uh you yeah. know um oh. i mean what that would be pizza would be pepperoni sausage and mushroom good choice i remember when Ooh. i met nolan north at uh, liverpool i asked him at yeah. cna do, do you put the milk before the cereal or the cereal before the milk and my dad was so embarrassed but everyone loved me for it <laughs> the cereal before the milk yes the cereal yes. before the milk. yes yes, yes. Yeah. i don't like people who put pineapples on their pizzas I, I do didn't not say like pineapples, pineapples on the cereal. I was like, no, what? Pineapples what? on their pizza, I, I'm not a fan of. I, I don't, I, I mean, I get sweet and savory, but it ruins a good pizza for me. It's one of those things that just gets like stuck when I'm eating it going, mm, that's not supposed to be there. Mm, so. Yeah, for me, it's just cheese and, you know, just like the thought of pineapple on pizza. I don't know. I want to yeah. try it, but at the same time, I don't. I just think it goes better on a fruit salad, I suppose. Agreed. But, you know? yeah yeah oh my god i'm craving fruit right now actually i don't have a lot downstairs i need to probably get some strawberries next time i go out <laughs> yes good <laughs> i have a tangerine tree in my backyard that is like really? the most prolific tree and wow. it has the best the best tangerines but it's funny because they all i only get a full crop every other year but the year that i get the crop it is like i have more i have more tangerines and i know what to do with and the squirrels have a field day with them they just really? love to eat them oh. yeah they just eat them yeah so, oh, that's so i played sweet. a squirrel i played a squirrel yep i was a squirrel in uh in squirrel boy with oh. uh, pamela with pamela adlon squirrel uh, and, boy that uh, sounds squirrel boy i've got to google that because yeah. that sounds very familiar why is it only uh it was on cartoon network it only lasted one season oh. Um, it was Everett Peck. Everett yeah, he did Peck. Duckman. Yeah, that's where I know the art style from. Yeah, and Everett yeah. Everett just passed away this year. I know, so it was, yeah. I know. yeah, like that was that was, was really unexpected. Oh, yeah, bless him. Or oh, it was cancer, bless him. That's really he was sad. a great guy. He was a great guy. I bet he was. I bet he was. He must have had a lot yeah. of fun working on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also on my little thing, I've also got Tara Strong there, Will Friedel, yeah. and the late great who we also just recently lost, Kevin Conroy. Oh yeah, so. Kevin and I spent a lot of time at conventions. We shared, a, yeah, we shared a ride to the airport one time, and we had just the most wonderful, yeah. just the two of us had a wonderful conversation about families. Wow. So, yeah, families so and brothers cool. and siblings, and yes. Wow, oh, that must have been so sweet. Wow. Yeah. I'm, he was I'm a great guy. Jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got me into Batman and like everything Batman related. Have you ever done anything Batman related, may I ask? Me personally, no. In fact, the only real kind of superhero thing I ever did was I did Static Shock. <gasps> oh, uh, um, yeah. 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 That was a, you know, it's funny because a, a lot of the times people hear me and no matter what I do, they just say, oh, he's a character. So he's a character. It's, he's not like this guy. 
I'm Batman, Robin, you know. So I don't get, I don't do a lot of those kind of roles, but when I do get the chance to do something like that for Static Shock, or even like Psychonauts, where I'm not yelling and maniacal, those are some of my favorite jobs in the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I know now. You were uh, Jimmy Osgood in the episode Jimmy, isn't the one about... Uh, yeah, the, uh, I bring a gun, gun to school. The, the yeah. gun, and you threaten to shoot, yeah, like a... Yeah. Yeah, like, like that like was that. Uh, that, wow. that particular episode was nominated for an Emmy Award um, for How like best mean? writing. I don't think I don't know. I mean, don't get me started on on the gun culture in America, which is just embarrassing. I won't go down that road, but okay. probably because, yes, yeah, so. <laughs> it's horrible, horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, Phil Lamar. Um, I'm also Billy West. I'm having them. But yeah. spoilers, everybody. Okay, <laughs> you didn't hear this. They'll they'll be on my podcast next month. I'm <laughs> filming. Oh yeah, Phil. So I funny. love Phil. I I've worked with Phil for years, and Billy. Billy and I have worked together for years. Yeah. Everyone okay. thinks that Billy and I had some sort of animosity because he was Zim, and then I took over. But it wasn't like that at all. We did. There was no animosity. Billy and I traveled to. Uh, uh, Australia together many times. Um, he came to my 40th birthday party many years ago and uh, wow. I had a really big musical theater birthday party where everybody was there. Oh it was God, so much fun. So yeah. cool. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, like I, I wish I would have gone to that because like musical theater for me, I stuck, sorry, my humidifier just turned off and it was just, it kind of scared me even though I had no <laughs> I was like, no oh. worries. <laughs> No worries. Um, so I do theatre, not all the time, but it's only because yeah. I study uh, uh, performing arts at college. So we've done a bit of musical theatre and acting and stuff like that. Good. So honestly, it's been it's been fun. Yeah, I suppose we've got yeah. a few more projects in the works and stuff. I don't exactly know what they are, but I know um I know we have a thing at the end of every year where we do like a showcase where we we pick any material each student picks any material whether it's a monologue or a song or a dance that yeah. they want to do and they perform it at the uh, local uh, big theater in our city. Yeah, I um, I started in musical theater. It's it's still my passion. I was an equity member as, as a singer and dancer at the age of 13. I mean, I started in television commercials and stuff, but when I really found my passion was in musical theater, it's still my favorite thing. I take trips um, to New York all the time to see um, Broadway musicals. A lot of my friends are Broadway uh, musical theater actors. The people I direct in in uh, my current shows that I'm mm-hmm. voice directing are all musical theater. Uh, like if you look at Hell of a Boss, uh, Alex Brightman is Beetlejuice. So I've got Beetlejuice in 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 a Hell of a Boss, um, and another show that I'm directing that's not out yet is Oh um, James Eigelhart, um, mm-hmm. who plays uh, Ozzy in in. Um, in uh, Hell of a Boss. He is uh, a Tony Award winning uh, actor as the genie from Aladdin. So, wow. Yeah, lots of big Broadway musical stars that I direct, which is yeah. my heaven. I didn't even know you directed for Hell of a Boss or even mm-hmm. like voice direct. I didn't even know you were like a voice director. Like, yeah, wow. I voice direct that. I voice direct uh, Has Been Hotel, which when it is released oh, uh, wow. will be, yeah, yeah, I love it. It's a lot That's of fun. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. You'll have to you'll have to remind me to um sorry, I'm just putting some uh, chapstick on because my lips it's mm-hmm. that time of year when my lips get oh, yeah. so sore. And I like get I thought I was lean on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That happens. Um mm-hmm. so I'd like to talk right now. As I said, um has been hotel I'll bring up later because there's something uh, I like to, you know, thing when I've got the words in my head because I'm yes. not sure whether to mention it or not. Basically, I'm working on a project with someone who was in the pilot of Has Been Hotel. I think it was the the pilot voice of Angel Face. Mm, uh, and, Angel. Uh, yeah, Angel, Angel Dust. Angel, Angel Dust. Dust, not Angel yes. Face. Sorry. Yes, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Who was who was Angel Dust? Uh, oh my god! Uh, if he watches this, I feel so Michael Kovac. <laughs> Michael Kovach, yeah, Got that's it. his name. I'm so, Michael. If you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I was just my mind is like ah, because like I don't watch Has Been Hotel or Hell of a Boss. I'm very ashamed to say. Mm-hmm. Um, please don't kill me. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
you know, I'm more familiar with your other media, like, of course, Crash 4. Like, I used to always play that yeah. when it was first released because of such yeah. a stellar voice cast and just how the game was designed and stuff. Uh, so what was it like working on, like, all these video games, like Psychonauts, Crash 4, so Connectables, I, uh, I Well, I'll tell you, um, I'm a gamer myself, so I like platform games. I play, I first game I ever played, it's an interesting story. Um I enjoy recording animation a lot because we're in a room with other actors or nowadays we're on Zoom with other actors and we get to interact with each other. Video games are a little bit rougher because, you know, you don't get the whole script. You don't know what's going on. The the director has to fill you in so you get an idea of what, what you're talking about. And a lot of times it's like an ABC take three in a row of each line. Um, but that said, I love video games and I love being in them. Um, I, uh, when my son, my oldest son was probably of, you know, video game age, I guess maybe he was seven or so. I went to a store that used to, you know, used to sell video games on disc for your PlayStation. And I said, look, I, um, I want an, I want an age appropriate game for my son. And um, they recommended two games. The first was, and one of my favorites of all time, Ratchet and Clank. And yes! the second was, um, uh, why am I forgetting the name? You know this. Um, what? Time. Why can I not? Uh, oh, oh, Jack and Baxter. Jack, Jack and Baxter. Jack and Baxter. Yes. yes. So we had been doing all those computer games when since they were young, like um, Pajama Sam and those sort of things. But when I got cast in a video game one time, it was for Insomniac Games. And um, when I got in there, I saw this big poster they had, which was a mosaic of all these scenes from Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. And when I went in there to do this video game, and I don't remember what, which one it was at this point, but I said, oh my gosh, you guys produce Ratchet and Clank? Yeah, it's one of our biggest games i said it's my favorite game in the world i love it and i proceeded to tell him every weapon i liked everyone i didn't like how long it took to get the bolts in the first game to get the rhino and they go wow you're a fan from that point on <laughs> they put me they put me in every ratchet and clank game so wow. i was the zoni i was stuart drago i was pollux i was all these characters and i and i was when they redid the game i was the sales guy when you go and buy things um so uh, I love doing those games. Um, Psychonauts is obviously very close to my heart because uh, that was a game that wasn't commercially successful uh, was it when not? it first came out. No, when it first came out. But it oh, was right. a cult classic. People loved it. And that's why it took us so long to get the second one out because originally we started it as a um, as a fundraiser, a fig. I mean, a uh, what do you call it? Um crowdfunded yeah. it was a fig campaign but it also raised three million dollars in like the first three days wow so microsoft said we'll put some money in and let's do it the way you want to do it and we finally got psychonauts 2 out after like 16 years 20 to be honest with you for me wow when i first started the, the program wow. so what psychonauts is currently out now like what's psychonauts 2 is this still psychonauts number two, two. making oh, a third uh, one uh, we are not in. We are not doing a, a third one as of yet, and I don't know if we will. But Psychonauts two came out last year, and it was uh, very successful. Way more successful than the first one. Uh, was up for best game of the year, as was as was um, uh, Ratchet and Clank: Rift in Time, in which wow. I play um, Zircon Junior. Zerky, Zerky, little Zerky. Um, and uh, so I, I don't think either of them won. So I hope it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, man. oh I'm, I'm sure it won't now i'm really like intrigued to find out the winners of all these categories mm -hmm. like so the static shock emmy and then the game the game awards for best game of last year yeah hey, you're, gonna have to, you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to make a note of that on my phone now yes um <laughs> static shock jimmy emmy um, yeah ratchet and clank psychonauts 2 game award best game just with no punctuation yeah. that just looks like a random sentence that i've just yes into my phone. <laughs> exactly i'll look this up and i'll definitely <laughs> say I'll, I'll definitely like put them on the screen or something sounds good you know? sounds yeah. like a plan yeah 
Yeah, it's the magic of editing. It can you can do anything you want with it. I love it. Me, me too. I've uh, <laughs> I've been uh, I've been doing YouTube since uh, 2014, but properly editing video since about 2017. Yeah, so that's that's really time consuming, though, isn't it? Yeah, like sometimes yeah. I just get editors block, and I'm just like, I can't edit this. I'm just going to leave it as it is and just stick it out there. You know, it's just yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's it gets you know? it's it takes a lot, and it takes a lot of computer space and and server space. So yeah, sometimes CPU it doesn't and stuff. work as fast as yeah. as you want it to work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about some of your live action work. So specifically, okay. uh, the Infamous and the Monsters Today. So first of all, I'm going to start with the Infamous. Um, okay, well, you know, if you want to start with my earliest film that people know me from, it was a movie called Summer School with uh, sure. Mark Harmon, Kirstie Alley, and directed by Carl Oh, Kirstie Weiner. Alley, we recently just Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so... I can give you a brief overview of my of my on camera career. So yeah, I started sure. out as an cool. I started out as an on camera actor at the age of ten. I started out as a hand model for um, toys for toy companies. So when they would cut to close up of the kids playing with the toys, it would be my hands. And then I started doing a lot of on camera commercials. Mm -hmm. And then from on camera commercials, I started doing a lot of TV sitcoms. And then at about the age of 13, I did my first equity musical, Oliver, at the Aquarius Theater here in, in Hollywood, which is now the Nickelodeon Theater, which is an interesting, you know, uh, oh, circu wow. circuitous uh, roundabout way for me. Um, but I loved musical theater and I thought that's what I was always going to do. But I was working in film and, and television and agents weren't going to send me to New York for a year to do a, a play. But... I did a lot of, of sitcoms. I did different strokes. I did head of the class. I did, you can't take it with you from rags to riches. So by um, 1984, I uh, landed a, a part in a, a regular part uh, as a lead in a series called safe at home, which was on WTBS uh, Ted Turner Superstation, which is now TBS. And it was produced by a company called the Arthur company. And the Arthur company is famous because they were famous for redoing all the uh, TV shows from the past, including the Munsters. Uh, but before I got to the Munsters, I started doing more film work and I did a film called Summer School in 1987, starring Mark Harmon, Kirstie Alley, who just passed away. She was a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, she, um, she was really sweet. I have a lot of memories of shooting that film with her. I, I didn't see her a lot after we shot that film, but um, during that time, it was it was a really good time. Um, and then Carl Reiner, comedy legend with Mel Brooks, uh, was the director of that wow. uh, movie. Yeah. When I finished that movie, I came back to uh, my other series, Safe at Home, and then I left it. And then the same company that I left that series started doing The Munsters Today, and uh, that's where I met a little, I think, 10-year-old or 11-year-old Jason Marsden. Um, and um, I played Howie Buchanan. Uh, I was originally Marilyn's love interest. And uh, myself and um, Dave Madden, who played Reuben Kincaid on The Partridge Family, for those of you who want to go back that far, um, we're the first ones to find the Munsters after 30 years. And we're the first ones that our hair stands up on end and we run through a wall. So I did probably, I did the, I think I did, a, I did most of the first season and a little into the second season. And then I left the show after that. Yeah. I see. And what, what about the informant that you did in 2009? Ah, the informant. That's an interesting the informant. One. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. The informant was an interesting one. Um, I knew the executive producer of the informant who was a partner with um, Steven Soderbergh, the director, and it was his company. And he told me that he had gotten the rights to this book called The Mark Whitaker Story. And The Mark Whitaker Story is who the informant is about. It's a true story. And he read it and he, he said, you know, I, I have an idea to do this movie, but even though it's a serious story, I want to do, um, I want to cast comedians. And I want to I want to cast funny people and interesting people in this. Um, so Tommy Smothers is in it. You know, um, 
Frank Welker is also in it. I'm in it. Voiceover people, like interesting, like charactery people. Yeah. And and Tony Hale, uh, Tony Hale, and I, um, we we were we we played law partners together. I played a character named Bob Zeideman. and Tony Hale and I represented Mark Whitaker, played by Matt Damon, in his his uh, court case. Um, it's a fun movie. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, Steven Soderbergh directed it and he was great. So um, people people say to me all the time, uh, do you still do on camera work? And it's like, yeah, I still do. Um, it's just that, you know, voiceover became my bread and butter in 19, you know, 89, 90. So, you know, it's it, it was just, you know, really a godsend to be honest with you. But since then I did a movie called Crazy Stupid Love um, with um, Steve Carell. And most of my part was was cut out of that, but you can still see me. In a, if you if you don't blink, you can still see me in that one. But that's my on camera work. But the reason um, the executive producer really knew me was because I had done a lot of comedy. I started in sketch comedy, so I was a sketch comedy performer. Um, I worked with Fred Willard, the actor, for almost twenty years. We did the the Kimmel Show. I did the Tonight Show. I did Saturday Night Live and some sketches and. Um, and so I think that's really my my passion is sketch comedy and uh, stage musical theater. But I love voiceover, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, where would you be today without voice and character like Billy, Jim? Moxie? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, Who knows where yeah. I'd be? We... I don't know. Maybe you, you could be, you, you could voice everybody. Like, you know. It oh, it's everybody. Oh, yeah, the door. Oh, yeah. that's just right. Yeah. I, I, I voiced a couch in... Uh, in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I oh, was a chair. Really? I voiced a chair. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. so cool! Wow, I remember because yeah. I met Melissa Joan Hart just before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, because makes 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 make you think it really does. Because like most of my celebrity interactions have been virtually because I've hardly been. To, yeah. I didn't. I hardly went to conventions before the pandemic. Uh, yeah. Now, like I'm going to all of them, and I'm just meeting. Yeah. Them as if they're it's fun, to right? It's I fun. know. Yeah, it's just so fun because. I'm obviously doing voiceover now. I've just done a theme park gig and I've also just done an interactive gig, which will probably be out next month, oh, good. Um, which I'm excited good. about. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm slowly building up my demo um, and I'm getting a UK. Uh, I can exclusively reveal also to the public because I haven't publicly said this. I'm not just getting a UK agent. My parents have said I ought to seek US representation as well. Wow. That would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Do you think you would be able to move to the U.S. to do that? Mm, maybe not move, but maybe like virtually voice projects for mm -hmm. stuff in America. Yes. Um, but I would definitely go on holiday there, like to America. I mean, like, as I yeah. said, I've got a California trip planned next spring and then I'm going yes. again in 2024. So maybe when I'm older, yes, maybe. Um, yes. Now, I don't think we as a family would cope because I have a younger brother who also has learning difficulties. So mm -hmm. just the whole process of a move is just, it's too overwhelming. And even if it's abroad and we've all got to get passports, most of my family hates flying and stuff like that. So it's a- Yes, you know, yes. I'm the only one yes. who's adventurous and, you know, oh, yeah, I'm not afraid of anything. I got on a plane. <laughs> oh, God, I don't like this. Uh, but I've never been on a plane before. Like, never. Oh, really? No, I get never. that. I think the first time I was on a plane was probably, well, I was a kid, but I think I was probably, well, I guess I was young. I guess I was on a plane. But then we didn't go on planes again for a long, long time. Our family just didn't travel by plane. Now, my family and I travel everywhere by plane. My kids go to college out of state, so they... Uh, they all were on planes. My son this morning, I just picked up from the airport because he came home from for winter break from college. He's my youngest, yeah. Oh, bless, he, oh, bless him. Oh, yeah. well, that reminds me. I was going to ask, uh, you have uh, three uh, sons. Like, yeah. Yes. Um, have they, of course, of course, they've grown up with you. Um, they know you as simply just dad. They don't know you as Richard Hobbs, as the voice actor. Like, right. what's it been like for your sons to grow up with a dad, a voice actor for a dad? A dad for um, a I I don't think I mean we had a lot of perks we had a lot of fun things we got to do like we used, we got to go to the you know the Nickelodeon awards every year the Kids Choice Awards and and there was a lot of parties and we met a lot of you know we hung out with a lot of the other uh, voiceover actors and families etc. Um, but for the most part it was it's just been a very you know uh, 
simple life. You know, we, we have fun stuff. We travel a lot. That's the one thing we got to travel a lot um, because I attend conventions. And when I was doing Australia um, uh, conventions, they would fly out my whole family. So we would, so they got to travel a lot. It was really important for me to have my kids travel when they were young because I didn't travel a lot as a kid. Um, and I didn't want my kids to have fear of being able to survive or go places and fear anything being far from home. So um, I think that that if there were their friends knew my work, they didn't really talk to me about it very often. But I do know that as they got older, they began to really appreciate shows like Invader Zim and Billy and Mandy because uh, when my oldest son was born, he was only born in he was born in ninety seven. Um, Invader Zim came out in 2001, so he didn't really appreciate it until he was like 13, and by that time it had long been cancelled, so. When was your, uh, when was your, what year was your youngest son born in? 2003, he's 19. Oh, so he's a year older than me then. Yes. Yeah, 2004, yeah. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there, just like everyone else, all like, everyone I know was born in the wits autumn winter of 2003, and there's just me in the winter of 2004 <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so it's just yeah, so are you in it. are you in your uh freshman year of college uh i'm in my senior year if that really if it because it, it's it's sort of different over here because when yeah. you're at college you don't stay over that's like university I see. level but I, college, see. I go there and back every morning i'm in my third Got year it. of performing arts this is my last nice. year I'll be Very leaving nice. to pursue voiceover work fully uh, next good, summer. So good. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, so it has, it's been quite a ride, um, you know, yes. interviewing all these voiceover artists and everything like that. Um, and also, you know, talking to people like you. It just makes <laughs> me want to keep my career going, you know. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Richard. Oh, yeah. so I'd like, to, of course, I have to bring up, because of Jason David Frank, Power yeah. Rangers. You were the voice of Alpha yeah. Five in Power Rangers. So I was. Did, did you ever meet any of the folk who played any of the power, the original? Power oh Rangers? yeah, oh yeah. I met them all. Um, even though we were doing the voiceover, and um, they would still have to come up to the studio here in LA in Valencia uh, to the studio and do their voiceover because in the first year they were dubbing over the original footage from Japan of the original. Uh, Power Rangers. So they would do voiceover sessions the same time we would. But to be honest with you, um, I've spent more time on the road with them at conventions than we ever did when we were shooting the series. Um, spent a lot of time with David Yost. Um, uh, oh, Walter Jones a lot. Oh, um, yeah. and, and, and Jason and Jason uh, and Austin. Uh, so yeah. And um, not a lot of time with um, um Kimberly with um why am I blanking on Kimberly's name? Um who played Kimberly in uh, in Power Rangers Lee? Uh, uh, uh Amy Joe Johnson. Amy Joe. How could I forget Amy Joe? Yeah. I was um, thinking I did, as well. Yeah. 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 I've only spent a little time with Amy Joe. I I didn't I didn't really speak with her very often. But all the other voiceover people like Rita Repulsa, Barbara Goodson, and Lord Zed, Robert Axelrod, who's passed away. Um I I spent a lot of time with all of them. Yeah, yeah. And also I've got to ask about um uh Twee Trang, who played the yeah, original. Yeah, Twee Yellow was Clan. great. Did you did I, you ever meet her? Oh many times. Uh Twee was did great. She? Wow. Twee, Twee, Twee was really great. She um she she would had no problem speaking up at what she she considered an injustice with the uh, the way the show was being dealt with or um the pay that they were paying and all the things that that the company wasn't doing that she thought was fair. So Twee was great. Twee was great. Yeah, and for bless her, she was taken so soon because I think she was yeah. only about 27 when she passed yeah. away. Yeah, she was in a horrible car accident. It's very sad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just having, and also yellow is my favorite color. So as a kid, every time I'd see Power Rangers, I'd always look at the uh, the yellow Power Ranger, and I think, oh my gosh, automatically yeah. my favorite. So to find out yeah. about uh, Twee, and it just made me just feel really sad. You know? Yeah, just... it was sad. It was very sad. She was. Yeah. Uh, she was. She was great. She was a wonderful person.
Yeah, and also uh, Jason David Frank, who, of course, we lost. So, Jason, I've I've spent many, 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 many hours with the conventions because we were always doing conventions together. Um, oftentimes, I would introduce him to, for his panels as Alpha 5, or he'd come up during one of our voiceover panels. Um, very sad. You just never know. You never know what's what's going on with people. You just, yeah. you know, you never know. Um, we have a tendency to think that everybody's got it together uh, and that everything's great on the other side of the fence, that everything's greener on, on the other side of the fence, but um, it's sad. And um, mm. you just, you know, check in with people. That's what I say. Check in with people. If you, if you think about them, just check in with them. Yeah, that's what um, I always do. Like, even if no one yeah. checks in with me, I always check in with everyone just to really see how they're doing and stuff like that. So. Yeah. That's yeah. why I always start our interviews with. So, how are you feeling today? And I forgot, I, yeah. I feel really bad because I forgot to ask you about Richard. How are you feeling today? <laughs> I'm feeling great. The, the holidays are upon us and I love the Christmas time. My favorite thing to do after decorating a Christmas tree and putting up our lights is to just light a fire in our fireplace, you know, drink coffee or hot cocoa and just watch um, uh, holiday movies. I love the original um Christmas Carol, um, and I watched Scrooge just yesterday, and I'm watching It's a Wonderful Life, and oh! I just, I love it. It's one of my favorite movies, It's a Wonderful Life. Well, that's a coincidence, because yeah. we did It's a Wonderful Life for our Christmas show last year, and we just did I Christmas love it. show this year. It's me, it's me, Barry, George Barry, it's me. Yeah. yeah, I played a Violet Bick. Uh, there was a oh, hi, place. Georgie, poor George. <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going there, Violet? What, what do you say there? Uh, what? Get back <laughs> to the moon or something like that? I can't yeah. remember. I feel so bad. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, I know okay. there's one line where it's like, I'll throw out Mary. I'll I'm going to lasso up the moon. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do today, tomorrow, for the rest of my life. I'm going to build bridges and go places. And I'm, if I, would you like the moon? If I could, I'd lasso the moon and give it to you right now, Mar Mary. And you could eat it and swallow it and moon beams would shoot out of every, every, out of your ears and your eyes. And then it's, oh, and then boy, she does God, the painting. God. George lassos. <laughs> jo Buffalo yeah, George girls, really lassos come out stole. tonight. Yeah, come out tonight. I come, come out, out tonight. Oh, I remember Buffalo doing the girls, dance. won't you come out tonight, tonight. And, and dance by the light of the, light of the moon. moon? What did you wish of when you would throw that bra? Yeah, <laughs> I gotta tell you, George. Oh man, I'm smiling like you can yeah. feel like my cheeks. Love that movie. Oh, Love I, it. I know. It's, I never seen it until we had to obviously watch it uh, to study for our Christmas show and stuff like that. Uh, and then we did a Christmas Carol this year. I played a female version of Tiny Tina, so that was Tiny that was Tina, yeah. Mine as well. Yes, Tiny yeah. Tina. Um, God bless cool. us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. I to speak yes. and a Cockney accent for that. It, I'll um, try that. God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. It's, it, it, I, I'm worried when I do it because I sound Australian because you're thinking you're well, going, God bless us, everyone. Cockney is an interesting accent, I'll tell you, because I had to take Cockney accents. I was telling you when I did Oliver and I had to have training in it because I had my big line. These sausages are moldy. Well, yeah. I went to see um, a singer by the name of Billy Bragg. And Billy Bragg was a punk rocker, but his music... Um, appealed to um Woody Guthrie who was a big folk singer in, in in the in the Americas he wrote this land is your land uh, back in the 1930s um and when he passed away he left this whole catalog of songs and so he um this there Woody Guthrie's family asked Billy Bragg to put the music to him and so I went to see it in concert and Billy Bragg said, a lot of people ask me if I'm going to do this with an American accent. And I said, I wasn't because as a child, I saw Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. And I was so horrified at his accent that I swore I would never do that for an American accent. Well, that damn Mary Poppins. <laughs> that <laughs> bears what I call a doorway to a place of enchantment. And it also links to our Christmas show because we had to perform as the, the ending musical number because they thought it was too boring, super califragile, sex Oh, because I was afraid to speak when I was no, just, I was a, just lad. a lad. Before, Before they gave, they gave me those tweaking, told me I was, me was bad. bad. And then one day I learned what word the word 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 say again 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 now. The biggest the word you ever heard. And this is how it goes. Oh, super califragile, sex
Even though the sound of, the sound of it is something quite atrocious. atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Should be a camera for the second time. This gets me out of doses. Yes. Oh, that was fun. Oh, yeah. So um, we did that. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Um, and then we someone brought up the subject of Mary Poppins, and then. I've never seen the original film, also I'm very ashamed to say that, but I only remember one song where it was like, it was just Dick Van Dyke's song as his character. Yeah. Was it, it, Bert? it was, it, it was Chim Chimini, Chim, chim Chimini, Chim Chim Chiru. Good luck, we'll rub off when I shake hands with you. <laughs> oh, blow me a kiss. Ding. And that's lucky too. Do, 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 do. I love it. I, I, yeah. Um, and I loved um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which was another. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, because movie. I remember because they were originally going to cast Julie Andrews in that film, but then they decided yeah. against it. I can't remember the original reason why. I think it's because like she'd already worked with Dick Van Dyke uh, many times yeah. or something like that. So instead they got Sally Ann Howells, I think. Yes. Like... Who was great? Sally Ann was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it say? It's Julie Andrews. It, this it mm. was, um, I liked um, Toot Sweet Toot. Sweet, the musical candy that toots when you eat. Toot, sweet. And I loved... Um, oh, wow. Benny Hill was in it. I didn't really... I loved I Benny Hill. I loved him. He would be canceled today, by the way. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think he... Yeah, he couldn't get away with the things he did in that oh, show if you yeah. ever watch it. Yeah. But I okay. loved Benny Hill. He played the toy maker. Yeah, he did. Oh, apparently Julie turned down the role. Round she and round on a music box. Do, do. Do do do. I love that. So I don't know. I don't know the words, but it's just enjoyable hearing you sing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I, I can. I know. I know most lyrics to most songs. It just yeah. That's my thing. I think I need to come to you every time I need to think of anything. Yeah, that's right. Or anything. Uh, so, so, uh, but but she rejected the role of truly scrumptious because she considered that the part was too close to Poppins. Dick Van Dyke was cast as caricatures. Pots? Caracatus Pots. Caracatus Pots. After he turned on the role tea pots. of Fagin in Oliver, who then obviously was played by Ron Moody in the. Uh, and Ron, I can't imagine anyone but Ron Moody. I I, I don't I can't see Dick. He's an absolute in that role. king. Oh my gosh. Oh, Wait. everyone in that film: uh, Oliver Reed, um, oh, Mark yeah. Lester, Jack Wild. Um, it was just uh, oh so. Here's something interesting. Did you see the musical, the the, the movie? No, but I, I've only, I've only so, seen promos of it. Yeah. So the movie, the the play, my first equity play was Oliver at the Aquarius Theater. And it was yeah. produced and starring Shamie Wallace, who had played Nancy in the 1968 oh, yes. Oscar winning movie. Yeah. Oh, and it yeah. was, um, it also had a, a famous actress from, from Britain um, named Tessie O'Shea. She played Mrs. Bumble. And the director of the play was the, the Oscar winning choreographer of the 1968 musical, Oliver. If you get a chance to see it, it it's, it's a great movie. It's, it's amazing. I'll definitely, I'll definitely try and see it. Definitely for sure. Yeah. But Ron uh, Moody is like the best. It's like, yeah. I have so much respect. In this life, one thing counts in the big, large amount. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boy. <laughs> You've got to pick a pocket or two. Loved it. Loved him. Uh, uh. So I take it that you like also like British comedies then? like Love like British comedies. In fact, one of my about. favorite all-time shows is, um, is The IT Crowd. I loved, I love The IT Crowd. I love the Mighty Boosh. I love, obviously, um, Monty Python, of which I've worked with um, with um, uh, Eric Idle. Eric, Eric Idle, Idle, yeah, yeah, worked with Eric Idle a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, uh, I do. I love Faulty Towers. I could go on and on. And, wow. But I do love British comedy. And I love Benny Hill. You know. So. Yeah, I presume like you've obviously heard of the uh, the Carry On films. Yeah, there, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my man. Hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like I have, um, I have a movie at chess. Oh my gosh, so good. I was also a huge fan of Peter Sellers. I loved <gasps> yeah, all Pete, the Pink Panther movies the Pink, and Doctor Strange. Love. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was was amazing in a, in a small role, but an amazing role in um, Lolita. Oh, Lolita. Yeah. yeah, he plays. Yeah, he's. 
it's he's it's good. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But okay, uh, Peter Sellers is really good in that. Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll look it up for sure. Well, yeah. of course I know who Peter Sellers is, but that Lolita, I will look up. Yes. Yes. Sure. So back to your career. Well, I mean, yes. it's in conversation with ATF. We tend to go off topic and, you know. It's all right. Have, and it's fun. It's really fun because Good. you have conversations that you will not find anywhere else. So I love it. Makes me so unique. Yeah, I know. I love yeah, it too. Good. As well, of course, I've got to talk about Hell of a Boss because, well, that's a lot of your uh, fans obviously love you as much. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I, went on, I went on Northern then. I was like, oh, yeah, all your fans love you as much. All your fans love you. All your fans love you as Moxie in Hell of love a Boss. As mo- so what was as it Moxie. like? So what was it um, like to work on that show? So this kind of came out of nowhere, and I was very, um, very honored, to be honest with you. Um, I had a... Um, a former student, because I teach uh, voiceover. I'm I'm a t- t- uh, I, I'm a voiceover coach as well. Um, named Kellen Goff, who <gasps> sent me a message one day, and um, Kellen said, "Hey Richard, um, there's a um, there's this great uh, YouTube influencer um, who is an amazing artist that's a huge fan of yours." And she wants to get in touch with you because she has a character for this show that she wants to do. And um, I didn't, I had never done a YouTube series. I had mostly done, you know, network and, and cable shows and streaming shows. So I wasn't, you know, interested in the beginning. But then I spoke with her, Vivian Madrano, mm-hmm. Vivzy Pop. Um, and I said, you have to contact my agent to, 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 work out the details yeah of course because like wouldn't it to do with, like your agency and then like the union yeah. like the tag mm-hmm. after because it's because i believe it's used to say it's non-union or something like so that's the misnomer that's the thing mm-hmm. that i always like to correct that's what's amazing about vivian is that everyone thinks oh it's non-union how do they do it and how do they get these big names like norman reedus and all these people if it's non-union it's not it's union um oh, vivian no. because she wanted me and other other uh big names she went union and paid for it out of her pocket. So everything that wow. is paid for is money out of Vivian's pocket that's put out these amazing animations. So one of the things was, was that Vivian had also taken my voiceover workshop. Uh-huh. And um, so I said, yeah, I would love to do the show. Um, they already agreed to do it union. And I said, and I would love to voice direct it. And Vivian said, I would love to have you voice direct it. That's how I started voice directing that show. And uh, so, um, so um, that's how I got into Hell of a Boss. And it's, I've just been so happy because Moxie gets to sing. Moxie, I mean, there's a lot of people don't understand um, Hell of a Boss. They think it's only about imps and hell and it's all violent and sex oriented and, and inappropriate, blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, there is, you know, adult humor and language in it yeah it's still a show about relationships Mm -hmm. and about love which is why i love the show why i love my storyline because i love my wife millie in the store in the story so moxie and millie are like a great couple you know you know um there's some episodes coming up in season two that are really amazing that people are gonna love they're just gonna love it because um season two um we really get into more storyline and backstory so you understand the characters more whereas season one it was just kind of some were random episodes uh but now we're getting into some pretty good storylines that i'm very proud of so we shall see i'm happy to hear that also i've got a little message from a little uh a little someone that you may you probably remember meeting a game that tune our dear friend eliza Oh, Eliza! I remember Eliza, yes. <laughs> and Peggy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she's like... The Skyless like, Sisters. Eliza! I was like to her, okay, when I get Rachel on my podcast, I'll let you know. And I've just let her know now, and she's just going, ah. oh, she's going crazy. So I was like, okay, I could not resist. So yeah, Say yeah, honest- hello for me. I will do indeed, yeah. Great. Oh my gosh, that was really fun, that game, that team. Yeah. Like, I'm not being... That was funny. fun. Yeah, yeah that like, was fun. When I, I, the first one I did was with Jeff Bennett and like- Oh, I Jeff never... Glenn. I love Jeff Glenn. I've, I've worked with yeah, him a too. lot. 
We did, uh, when we did, um, we did, I did Johnny Bravo. Oh, I yeah, did, did um, yeah. I did another one with him uh, where he was like, where he was like, uh, at, oh, Dave the Barbarian. I did Dave, Dave the, the Barbarian. barbarian. Yeah. I played Ned Frischman, Man of the Future. Yeah, that was, That's the one. That was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I'd never been to Game That Tune before and I never really know. What I thought was it was... Rob a, a game show. So an Ash Paulson and the voice yeah. actor not talking, but actually playing a selected video game together. <laughs> like, this is this like, is an ongoing thing that I a conversation that I have with Ricky Simons, who played Gurr on Invader Zim. Oh yeah, Ricky. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. and I are are really close. We've we spend we've spent countless hours together, um, and we always have this argument. He goes, I go, I don't get people who watch other people playing video games on a video game platform or a computer or something. And he goes, you watch sports, don't you? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, you're not actually playing the sport, are you? I'm like, no. And he goes, well, <laughs> like, okay. What it kind of remind, reminds me of when I was a kid and I would um, stand in an arcade and watch other people playing, you know, uh, Pong or, uh, or, yeah. or Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah, know, Pac -Man. yeah. 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 Oh, uh, so about Invader Zim, you know, uh, yes. Ricky, was it true that he was brought into voice girl because like they couldn't find a, a voice actor for him that could suit the voice? They wanted someone with no experience, so they just went with Ricky. So Ricky was old oh friends God. with Jonan. He had known Jonan for years uh -huh. and he definitely wanted someone who was not good at voiceover. Someone who had not done voiceover, someone who was inexperienced and Ricky fit the bill. And I'm Ricky was really now. great. Yeah, I mean, Ricky <laughs> Ricky is Gurr. And, you know, and Ricky is a, a, what I call a gentle giant. He's like 6'3", uh, a big guy, but he's as gentle and as sweet as Gurr is. So everything oh. you love about Gurr is Ricky. I'm going to have yeah. to get him on my podcast now. <laughs> yeah, like, you should get him. He's a great guy. He's yeah, great well, guy. in that case, I will contact him after we have filmed this you episode. You should. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I saw something the other day and it was like a voice file. I can't remember what it was for, but I think hmm, it was something to do with like Zim's voice in the pilot. Oh, yeah, because it was. Oh, it was. Uh, yeah. What you saw was uh, Mark Hamill doing. Mark Hamill. Uh, yeah, yes. that's that's it. That's so, it. Yeah. And then it was Billy West. And then what happened during that? So this is what happened. Um, and this is the, this is the honest to goodness, true story of Invader Zim. Um, before I ever came on uh, this project, I was doing uh, the Angry Beavers at the time. Yeah, and when they exactly, first yeah. did uh, when they first did the Invader Zim pilot, they they first tried Mark Mark Hamill, and Joan was like, "Yeah, but you know, he's the Joker. He's the Joker. No one can beat him as the Joker. No. He's too familiar as the Joker." Yeah. In the meantime, um, they said, "Well, what about Billy West?" and um, and Jonah goes, well, he's doing Futurama. And so everyone knows that voice. I want someone that no one really knows as this voice. Well, Jonan was a fan of Power Rangers. And then he said, oh, Richard's at Nickelodeon. He's doing Angry Beavers. So they brought me in. They said, we want to read Richard Horvitz on the pilot. So they brought me in and Jonan, I, I, to be honest with you, I thought I, I was reading for Dib. To be honest with you, I thought it was more right for the character of Dib. But Jonan was like, no, 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 no. We want you for Zim. Do, do, let's do Zim. And Jonan loved it. Just laughed because I want Richard. So it was originally supposed to go to me. But the executive producer of Angry Beavers was also the executive producer of Invader Zim. And she's like, well, he's already on the Beavers right now. And I don't want voices that are too close. So they passed on me. And I was devastated because I really thought I had this series. So they went ahead and did the pilot with Billy, with Billy West. Um, and then Angry Beavers ended its run. And literally one day I was in the coffee room of, of Nickelodeon and Jonah was in there. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. He goes, Beavers is over. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, come with me. And we went into the studio. We literally went into the studio and they had the pilot that they were getting ready to send off to New York. And Jonah picked like three major scenes. Uh, the lunchroom scene, like I eat food. And 
And it's like the classroom scene, major Zim scenes. And he had me voice over Billy. So I voiced over Billy's uh, on the pilot. They sent it to New York and they said, okay, we'll take Richard. And that's how I got it. But the thing that's really misunderstood about the pilot is everybody said, oh, in the pilot, it's Billy West. What people don't realize unless they listen closely is that 70% of it is actually me. Meaning mm. you'll hear Billy start a line and then I'll finish it. Or it'll be my laugh and Billy's something. But because I ADR'd it, meaning I just dubbed it for the audition and I wasn't actually hired at that point. It was all credited credit. under Billy. All credited yeah. under Billy. Yeah. Mm. So wow so that's the truth about that story well in that case i think i know what i've got to do now because sometimes when i talk to my guests i tend to stick up a video and see if we can you know distinguish who voices who okay in we'll see. Zim, pilot so yeah. it's on youtube now um okay. uh moment let's just close that and uh, share screen real quick here we go so okay. someone's uploaded the full pilot i'm not sure how much of this i'm going to be able to show because of let's see sure. um, um but it's all let's this. yeah do that you could start in the um in the classroom is where you first okay. start to, uh, right yeah okay let's do that there we right go. okay yeah there we go and an outer space i'm gonna collect rocks from our and float in the space shuttle. So do you know anyone else who voiced in this? I know all of the people that voiced in this. That's really? Andy Berman. Alien. Do you find something amusing, Zim? <laughs> That's Billy. Yes. Yes, I do. That's Billy. <laughs> Look at his space suit. <sighs> That's Billy. This looks so cool. This was 1999. Yeah. Wow. So, I... let's see here. There he is. That was me. That was Mike. <clears throat> oh, was it? Oh, wow. I eat food. Just like you. Bill. That was Billy. I have a stomach. Billy. Billy. I made that sound, so I know a lot of the sounds. <laughs> yep. Cafeteria food. I don't like it either. I must be an alien too, huh, Deb? <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, Melissa Fawn. Oh, oh, wow! What's yeah. the matter? Scared of beans, space boy. So it's like you do the ADR yeah. with noises. And I do a lot of the effort sounds and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Is there any speaking? That, that was me. Yeah, that was me. Was it? <laughs> yes. Oh wow! So is there any part like big speaking lines that you did? Um, in the pilot I don't remember where they were. Okay. Uh, um, who voiced Gur in this? Or was Gur just mute? It was Ricky. Ricky. Oh, was it Ricky? Yes. Yep. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Well, we tried. <laughs> it's right. it's, okay. it's hard to hear him. It's hard uh, to hear my. my well, <laughs> at least, at least, yeah. At least you thought. I was gonna say because yeah. when I set, when I watched a video of uh, chaos in Skylanders, people were like, yeah. "All I can hear is Moxie," and it's just the entire conversation was just Richard Hobbits, Richard Hobbits, Richard. Oh my God, Richard Hobbits does, does, does such a good job. And it's it's, so many um, just it's funny because. It depends on what generation you grew up knowing my work. So you either know me as Zim, or you may know me as Chaos, or you may know me as Billy, where as Moxie, they go, oh, I hear Billy. Oh, I hear Zim. Oh, I hear Chaos. So it's like, it's hard to, to not know my voice because it's pretty distinctive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I'm a completely different person because I know you as Bumble from Connectables. Bumble. <laughs> I am Bumble. There's an interesting story with Bumble. Really? We, yeah. The, it, the story with Bumble is this, is that when I went to do Bumble, um, the the director at the time didn't realize how many lines Bumble had. And so what was supposed to be like a day, a day job yeah. ended up being like, like two solid weeks of recording wow. for a lot of hours, which made for a lot of money, which was really nice. 
But Bumble was fun. It's like, I'm Bumble. You're going to follow me through this. And I, and so, so much of that game is you got a gold medal. You got a silver medal. You got a bronze medal. Good work. Good job. Right. Yeah. Over and over and over. I got so slap happy one day. I went, you got a bronze medal. You didn't try hard enough. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and so they're like, they started laughing so hard, but. Oh, they didn't, they didn't keep it in. No. Oh. no you don't want to make, imagine what it would have done to your self-esteem if I had uh, said, you didn't it try was hard sad, enough. sad, but yeah. as, a, as a grown up, it would have made me laugh. <laughs> yes. As a grown up, it would make you laugh. But yeah, yeah that was a yeah. fun game. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, because like I remember that so well, and just to think, like I then found out you were Bumble. I was like, oh my gosh, that is like yes. so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm Bumble. So cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're taking me back. Seven year old me is just quaking in her yes. shoes. Oh my gosh, like yes. really. Um, yes. the last thing I really want to talk about because I know we we're coming to the end of our time yes. together because there's a few more stuff that I kind of want to fit in just before we get cut off. Um, I like to obviously talk to you about. Well, your staple characters, as I mean, well, when I say staple characters, I mean, well, Billy in The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. So yes. I remember growing up, briefly seeing it on television and just, hmm, yeah, okay. And of course, uh, Grey Delal was Mandy, Greg Eagles was Grim, I think, was his name Grim? I think, yeah. yeah. Grim. So, so what was it like quickly working on that before we uh, wrap uh, things up? So the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy were uh, was probably one of my favorite all time shows. Uh, it's it's you know it, it sits up there very high for me because one, um, I've been fortunate that I've been work I've worked with um, show creators that understand me and understand that I improvise a lot and I and, and understand how I like to play when I'm in the in the booth, and that is my job. That is the job of every artist uh, in this medium is to play pretend and play pretend fully. And so um, when we did Billy and Mandy, it was part of a you choose, you pick weekend. And it was three other shows and we won the most votes. And so we were gonna be made into a series. But like a year goes by and I hear nothing and two years go by and I'm thinking, well, maybe it's not gonna happen. But by like the third year, it was finally gonna be a series but it was gonna be called Grim and Evil. And it was originally two shows, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy and Evil Concarni. Oh which yeah, I Evil Concarni, because- Yeah, because Gray's in that, yeah. That's right. which yeah. I was only, Of which I was only on Grim Adventures. And mm-hmm. I was like, wait, that's not fair. I want to do, I want the whole show to be, you know, something I'm in. Um, oh, I have Phil the Miles on it as well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so Evil Concarni did all right for the first, you know, season or so, but then uh, Billy and Mandy did better. So they just made it the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. So working with Gray and Greg were great. It, it was just amazing. Phil Lamar was also on that. Um, a lot of people were on that. Tom Kenny would come on and do voices. Yeah, Renate. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. Um, oh. Rena Romano, uh, Maurice Marsh. Yeah, Maurice did voices. Charlie Adler. Uh, everyone, you name it, they were on this show. Um, yeah. Weird Al. F- who's that? Weird Al Yankovic was on. Oh yeah, Weird Al was on on two episodes. I'm seeing him live in two months for my birthday. He's a great guy. I've known (laughs) I've known Al for a long time. He's a great guy. Um, Wow. But um, what I remember mostly about that show is that that is that the creator Maxwell Adams um, let me and my wife write two shows, two episodes of that show. I would pitch him ideas, and he goes, "Yep, write it up." And I would write it up and they would, and I ended up, we ended up doing two episodes. The first was um, uh, one called the bad news ghouls. Mm-hmm. And the second one, which is a very famous episode is called keeper of the reaper. And that was a big, um, like, I think that was like a full half hour episode. Um, it's where, where the, the story, um, the storyboard artist uh, named Carl Greenblatt created the character Fred Fredberger and that he was the juror in that. And so it was from his point of view. So it was Kristen's and my idea, and we wrote the script, but Carl took it and put it from the the guy on the jury's point of view. And it was a very funny, and it became a musical. We got to sing Keeper of the Reaper. So yeah, wow. that was a lot of fun. So Richard, thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast. It's been an absolute delight to talk to you. And maybe we can do a part two in the future because we've not talked about everything. <laughs> we got it. it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Amber, the fan girl. You're welcome, Richard Horvitz. Um, 
Where can we find you on the web? Have you got any social media? Have you got a website? Sure. I'm um, on Instagram at Richard Horvitz VO and um, Richard Horvitz on Twitter, H O R V I T Z. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you're interested in voiceover classes, um, you can send an email to Richard Horvitz classes at gmail.com. Sweet. Wow. So with that, I'll sign off here. Thank you so much for watching this into well conversation with the lovely Richard Hobbits. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, stay safe, stay happy, be kind to others and yourself, and don't doubt yourself ever. Keep at it. Keep your head up. And we'll see you around. Bye and cut. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Bye.